Take it away. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Judith Pete. I'm going to chair this session, and we have wonderful, wonderful presenters this afternoon. And this being the last session, we are very lucky to have our first presenter going virtual. That is our own GoGN member uh, alumni, Dr. Vivian, who is going to share with us a professional development guidelines for OER, a case study of Brazilian fundamental education public school teachers. Welcome, Vivian. Okay, thank you, Judith, for that uh, introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I know this is a lot of good to see me. It's too late. It would, be wonderful, it would be wonderful, Vivian, to, uh, if you can turn your camera on. We'd love to see you, too. Oh, okay. Uh, then I didn't have to stop the uh, slideshow, so I will turn on my camera at the end. Okay, okay. sounds good. Um, so I just want to give a brief introduction to Dr. Uh, I have a distance education, open education, a consultant, instructional designer, and researcher connection to the company I own here in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And I'm very pleased here uh, to be here today presenting to you the study I do with Brazilian Fundamental Education Public School Teachers. So, uh, this is what I'm open to today, and I think we'll have enough time. I'm going to be giving you some background information on the study, the purpose of the study, the guiding research questions, contribution to the study, the method of the research design that I use, the findings, and how these findings yield from the development guidelines from OER. And finally, I hope to address some practical implications for professional development. Uh, so OER currently plans in the goals of the Brazilian National Education Plan, which is focused on increasing the national arts to the index of basic education development for the fundamental education cycle, which is equivalent to grades one through nine. And strategies to increase this index include including teacher training, disseminating educational technologies, and providing digital technology resources for pedagogical use. And OER can be used in all of these strategies. In addition, in 2011, the state of agreed that all educational resources must be licensed under CC licenses. More recently, in May 2018, our Ministry of Education published a new ordinance that establishes criteria for acquisition of educational resources aimed at basic education produced with the Ministry's financial education. Uh, so this new policy uh, did not provide any independent might interest, uh, but it's something that is very good for the country. Uh, however, uh, in the literature, there is a lack of analysis regarding experience with open digital content and OER, and there are also diverse barriers and challenges that impact OER uptake for the average K-12 school teacher, which includes readiness for change and innovation, possessing computer and ICT literacy, and institutional support, to name a few. Therefore, the provision of professional development is imperative to ensure effective practices. And at the time that we were doing my study, there were no already many uh, professional development programs for OER uptake and the within the to 12 public school selection. Uh, just last, uh, during last semester, 2018, uh, the government began an effort of professional development of the so, this study could be at addressing this gap. I would take the question what was it in the manifestation of the school? The crime is an implemented business like OER, a mental criminal thinking, but the biggest support of the business of the measure to factor this in terms of awareness raising strategy, content thoughts. And special focus utilizes tracks a set of evidence-based OER guidelines and models of professional development for Brazilian fundamental education public school teachers. The study was guided by three research questions and what factors influence the fundamental education public school 
just adopt certain issues from your professional practice perspective, but any professional development for any from your adoption decisions, and the third is the way to the research planning for the third section of the two, but I'm going to say that there are guidelines in this context uh, for professional development for the education. So we study the conditions of the insights of the comments or OR organization are within the control. We know the excellent research of OER organization update by raising awareness and building knowledge on the OER use. In this context, particularly in the, in the Brazilian K-12 public school system, and by providing uh, a set of OER guidelines in the context of professional development for Brazilian and mental education public school team. So this slide presents the methodology and research design used in this study, and uh, I use a case study methodology, and the OER development course comprised of five face-to-face -face workshops. So during the first workshop, I basically provided the participants with an overview of what OER are, uh, the five hours of OER, and what the face-to-face -face workshops would comprise. Uh, so during workshops two, three, and four, I used the key framework, uh, and 30 teachers participated in these workshops. And the design thinking framework, uh, it addresses the needs of teachers who implement innovation and the infrastructure that enables it. It is based on teachers' needs and local context, and it's a bottom-up, not top-down process, which was in line with my main objective because I did not want to impose OER adoption use in this context. So during workshop two, uh, I propose the following problems to the participants. How can we use digital resources to improve our pedagogical practices? And in this context, digital resource refers to the use of OER, but also to the use of ICT, which are perceived as an important avenue to OER use. Uh, so during workshop two, teachers were asked to this, uh, their certs and doubts in regards to the problem proposed. During workshop three, teachers were asked to this strategies and solutions in regards to the certs and doubts they had raised in workshop two. And during workshop four, teachers were asked um, to come up with how to build a prototype of how they would overcome the challenges they had raised in workshops two and workshops um, three. Uh, so data from design thinking workshops were analyzed using Warshaw's framework for effective use of ICTs. And this framework was a good fit for this study because it speaks to the need for literacy competency when using the ICTs, which I've already mentioned are important avenue for OER use. And uh, data for design thinking workshops were analyzed using a deductive coding approach uh, with four main descriptive codes, physical resources, digital resources, human resources, and social resources. And finally, during the last workshop, the fifth workshop, focus groups were conducted to assess the overall effectiveness of the intervention. And data groups were analyzed using a generic inductive coding approach, which yielded four main categories or descriptive codes, interest and motivation, knowledge obtained, support obtained, and effective type of TPD in OER for teachers. So uh, now I'm going to go over the findings for design thinking workshops, which are aimed at answering research question one. And in terms of human resource, the findings show that teachers in this context, they lack basic technology or IT skills, and they want formal long-term professional development to develop their IT skills to use OER. The findings also show that technology helps keep teachers updated their practices and engages students in the learning process. In terms of digital resource, the findings show that teachers are already using the internet search for images, videos, and music to supplement instructional content, but they're not necessarily looking for OER because they don't do so. Other factors such as accessibility, language-related issues, reliability of sites, and where to find quality material adversely impacts teachers' ability to use OER in this context. 
In terms of social resources, factors such as lack of time, lack of personnel, low salaries, only one computer teacher uh, at the school, external websites which are blocked by administration, lack of vision plan and support from administration, and teachers feeling professionally undervalued by authorities, also adverse impacts teachers' ability to use OER in this context. And finally, in terms of physical resources, factors such as obsolete equipment in the teacher's room, computers and other multimedia equipment being available only in the computer, uh, in the computer lab, and poor Wi-Fi connectivity also adversely impacts teachers' ability to use OER in this context. Findings for the focus groups, which are aimed at answering the search question two, show that for the categories interest and motivation, the teachers were, were interested in participating in the workshops due to its relationship with ICT skills. They were motivated to learn and reflect on new practices. However, the findings show that upon completion of the ODP, the teachers still had misconception in regards to the five R's of OBR. In terms of knowledge gained, new knowledge was, was gained because teachers before had never heard about or considered using OER in their professional practices. And findings also showed that there was a change in teachers' attitudes and conceptions with regards to OER use upon completion of the ODP. In terms of support obtained, support was limited to teacher participation only in the workshops. And when asked which incentives, policies, or other actions would provide further support for a professional development program in OER, the teachers mentioned factors such as increasing salary, the use of mobile phones for professional development, and better school infrastructure. And finally, in terms of effective type of TBD and OER for teachers, all teachers stated that they wanted hands-on professional development that teaches them step-by-step -step how to differ differentiate between open and closed resources and how to assemble and repurpose OER and ongoing facilitator support. So this kind of professional development should provide teachers with the necessary support for scaffolding engagement and in order to progressively lead them to empowerment and provide them with the autonomy and confidence required to learn about OER. So on this slide, you can see the TPD guidelines for OER uptake that show the different kinds of support are needed. And these guidelines come from the triangulation of the different sources of qualitative data. Uh, I know it's difficult to see them in this slide. Um, in my thesis, I present them in a table format, which is in, but uh, you can see I've left here the link to my thesis. Uh, so for now, we can go back to the guidelines. Uh, just to give you a brief overview, the guidelines have been divided into four main factors, policy support, organizational support, infrastructure support, and professional development support. And under each factor, who are the recommended actors, what are the recommended act actions, and how these actions can be taken. Uh, so basically, clear policies, organization pedagogical support, and availability of proper tools stimulate, enhance engagement with OER in this context. So uh, the, pro the professional guidelines uh, that result from the study, they're not intended to be prescriptive. However, they can pro provide some direction for policymakers, teacher educators, or school administrators who wish to promote the adoption and use of OER in the Brazilian public fundamental education system. The guidelines can also be adapted to local needs and contexts, but more importantly, in order to achieve effective outcomes through, through the use of the guidelines, school administrators and teachers need to embrace the idea of using OER. So the guidelines begin with the policy support factors because the policy provides directives and rules the organizational infrastructure and professional development factors. Teachers with OER depends on clear policies that provides directives and rules for their adoption and OER and use. And if abused with available infrastructure and tools and effective pedagogical support may enhance teachers' engagement with these resources in addition to stimulating their use. Although this study addresses an important gap on teachers' use of OER and the professional development required, more specifically in the Brazilian K-12 public school system, the integration and adoption of OER... I'm finishing. I'm finishing. One minute. 
Okay, I can see. Um, so I'm just going back here. Um, so the Lord has said address the important gap on teachers' use of OER and the TPD required. More specifically, in the Brazilian K-12 public school system, the integration and adoption of OER impact teaching requiring access on improving instructional strategies. As you can see, and the picture on this slide is a time-consuming, slow, gradual process. However, the introduction of OER can save costs for institutions, and that is very important right now in Brazil, uh, since we're going through a very uh, deep economic recession, and be an important avenue for the much-needed innovation and change in the cultural mindset of teachers in this setting. So that basically wraps up my presentation. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I will now stop sharing my screen. And well I'm open to your questions. Well done, Vu. Questions for Vivian? Questions? Well, I've got one for you, Vivian. It's uh, Jameson again. Good to see you, and great to see the culmination of your project. And also, really important for us to see more uh, Global South contexts and K-12 contexts. There's just not a lot of that present here at the OER 19 conference. In terms of uh, getting these guidelines out uh, and, and how to, to share them effectively, are, are you going to, to package them somehow, um, get it out of the, the dissertation format into some other kind of format? Uh, yes, in my thesis, well, thank you for your question. Uh, they didn't publish in a table format, and my thesis is open to anybody who uh, would like to access. That's why I've included a link uh, to it. I intend to soon publish an article, and uh, of course the article will include the guidelines. Uh, unfortunately, I have not had time because it's independent by thesis, which was in April last year. Um, I have been working a lot, so, uh, but yes, if you're interested, I can, you can send me, uh, you can Twitter me, you can find me on Twitter, send me an email, and I will um, send you my guidelines. Any other question or concern to Vivian? There's none. Well done, V. We are very, really appreciate you. Can you appreciate V?